Hi and welcome back. In this video we are going to have a look and see how the open source wireless access point they work but since we don't have an open source wireless access point we will use just the normal consumer grade wireless access point and we will see how we can convert this access point to an open source access point. We will see how we can load OpenWRT which is open source operating system for wireless access point onto this kind of uh, wireless access point. So first of all let's have a look at inside of this wireless access point and see what are the components how and how they operate. Alright so here we got the, the, the TP-Link opened up. Now as you can see the design of this wireless access point is very is very simple. In general the design of most of the wireless access points are very simple because they are based on the system on a chips uh, chipsets off the shelf coming from the uh, silicon vendors. So in this case we got a Qualcomm uh, this should be a QCA9533 which is a, it's, it's a 300 megabit per second A2211N uh, wireless uh, wireless chipset. So this single chipset it includes uh, the wireless uh, subsystem includes five Ethernet ports and also includes all the functions that you know it requires to operate the wireless like you know the software within this SOC uh, built into the into the hardware for for creating wireless SSIDs, doing WPA WPA2 encryption, you know doing the natting on the on the VAN port, doing the you know firewalling and all this stuff everything is built into this single chip which we have here now to support this chip uh, the RAM is extended also here there is a uh, Zental uh, DDR memory here and we got the small little 32 megabit uh, flash memory also here which is uh, functions for storing the firmware for for this uh, system on chip for this SOC so the firmware which is already here is from is from the manufacturer. So in this case is the TP-Link uh, firmware. And so in this demo today we will change this firmware and we will load OpenWRT uh, inside this flash and we make this SOC to work with OpenWRT uh, for our purpose to see how we can make this wireless access point as a disaggregated uh, wireless access point. This aggregation here means that you know we can change the software so although this is a bundle of the you know software and hardware but we can change the we can change the software within this wireless access point. Uh, there are other uh, open source wireless access points which are mostly coming from H-Core networks so those access points are uh, are coming again with similar kind of architecture with similar chipset either from Qualcomm or from uh, uh, Broadcom or you know even the other chipset companies like MediaTek or you know. So let's have a look at how we can load the OpenWRT inside this wireless access point. All right, so now we have we have connected the PC to that uh, wireless access point. I have powered it up. And this access point is using the, the IP address 192.160.1. And we'll just uh, log into this uh, access point username, admin, and password, admin, default username and password. And here we go. So this is the, uh, the manufacturer's original factory firmware on this access point. So we are going to change this firmware and change it to uh, OpenWRT. Uh, so for to do this, uh, I just need to take this firmware ver uh, the the hardware uh, version, uh, the, the product name and the hardware version, which is the version nine, and this one. And I searched it already in, inside openwrt.org. If you search your uh, the model of the access point, uh, if if it is supported, give you uh, a complete page about the about how to load and unload OpenWRT. Uh, for this particular access point. So here we got the TP-Link WR841, which is the access point which we have here. Uh, it says, you know, the information is two antennas, four ports and one port. So total five Ethernet ports, uh, ten fast Ethernet ports, uh, four megabyte or 32 megabit of flash, uh, 32 megabyte of RAM is there. And also the information about the different uh, versions. 
uh, different hardware versions. So this model has started from 2007 and continues. And uh, now, for example, the version, so the version which we have is version 9, uh, which is a 2014 version. And um, the new versions like, you know, version 13 here, uh, it says that uh, there is a major hardware uh, change in the version 13 of the same access point. Uh, now they are using the MediaTek uh, uh, SOC system on chips instead of Qualcomm. So same manufacturer, they use different chipsets uh, based on the availability uh, in the market and also, you know, when some new uh, chipset or silicon manufacturers, they produce something new, they may change the, uh, the chipset. Uh, this table shows some information about the hardware. So, for example, here we got the version 9. You know, we are running on the Qualcomm 9533. Uh, the previous version, they were all based on Atheros. Uh, this one also, I think, is just the same as the same Atheros because Atheros got acquired by Qualcomm. Uh, the flash memory chipsets and also the, uh, <clears throat> the RAM is also specified. Uh, the RAM, actually, the one I, I saw, uh, it's a Zentel, not the Winbone, so it might be different in different versions or different different production lines. Uh, we got some more information about the, uh, the, 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 the CPU and port indexes. Uh, now, this table is interesting because it gives us the installation URL that's uh, so based on the version number of the, uh, of the hardware, we can download the the correct file, the OpenWRT file, which we are going to install on this access point. So this one is the OpenWRT install image, and this one is the upgrade image. We don't use the upgrade image because currently we don't have any OpenWRT on this access point. So I will download the OpenWRT install image for version number nine, which we got. So let's click here and download this file. Now, for installation of this uh, this firmware, it's simple. You know, it just says you can do it through the web interface. Uh, first, download the image and log into the web web interface of the, of the access point, and you can just do the firmware upgrade from the from the web interface. Uh, so that's very uh, sweet and easy for doing that. And let's try and do the uh, do the upgrade. So I will go back here on our uh, wireless access points. I go to System Tools, Firmware Upgrade, and I choose the new file which was downloaded, this one. This is the OpenWRT. This is the file just downloaded now. And we click on Upgrade. Are you sure you want to upgrade? OK, yes. So I choose to upgrade. Uh, let's give it some time. Let it get completely flashed and we will continue after that all right so the access point rebooted and uh, the ip address has actually got changed so uh, in between i was changing the ip address of this machine so the access point now is 1921 say 1.1 previously it was 0 0.1 so now we got the web interface of the open wrt uh, of the same access point i just need to set a password uh, for the first time and uh, same thing here. Uh, <clears throat> we can enable the SSH access, uh, which is important, uh, you know, for, for our testing and, uh, you know, uh, development uh, works, you know, on the access point. Uh, drop beer uh, is, a, is a piece of software which is very similar to OpenSSH, but Drop Beer is very lightweight uh, version of the mm, uh, implementation of the SSH uh, SSH server on, you know, which is created for very low end uh, machines, machines with very low uh, CPU and memory. Uh, so that's why, you know, we have uh, Drop Beer here. So Drop Beer, uh, you know, you can define it should listen on which interface for the SSH, SSH port, password authentication. We can enable or disable the password authentication. It is enable disable the uh, the root uh, login, and also uh, you can disable the uh, the SSH uh, from root. So I just configured the IP address. Uh, sorry, the the root password. 
if you go to the status, you know, it just shows the information of the of the OpenWRT, the, the system, the free memory, the DACP, all the stuff. And also you can do, uh, you can check also the, uh, the system software, the packages. So OpenWRT is a modular system. Uh, it uses uh, OPKG for installation uh, of packages. It's very similar to to, to other uh, Linux package managers, and you can you can install you know, you know from range of the packages which are available uh, from uh, from OpenWR uh, from OpenWRT. If you click on the install packages, for example, here we got BusyBox is installed. We got DNS, DNS mask, which I think is used for the DHCP. We got Dropier, Firewall, and IP tables, and other uh, uh, different components which has been uh, listed here. Uh, now let's try to do the SSH to uh, to our OpenWRT. Let's get this terminal. And if I do SSH to that 192.168.1.1. Okay, I have this uh, in another machine. Let me fix this. Okay, so now we got that fixed. And we just enter the password, and here we go. We are in the shell of the OpenWRT on this wireless access point. Uh, so, as I said, you know, we have OPKG commands which we can call. Uh, so, it's similar to other package managers like YUM or uh, apps of Ubuntu. Uh, but here, I don't have we don't have internet access on this wireless access point, so it's not able to connect to the OpenWRT and get the list of the available packages. So on the SSH, you know, you have full access. Uh, you know, in general, you can do lots of stuff uh, from here. And uh, as you can see here, also the uh, the file systems, the, the different partitions uh, that has been already created. All right, so this was the process for uh, actually hacking a, a wireless a standard consumer grade wireless access point and changing into open WRT. Uh, but there are open uh, open source open hardware wireless access point available uh, for enterprise grade uh, you know kind of uh, access point which are uh, available. Uh, if you go to uh, if you go to opencompute.org uh, from open compute and we go to projects uh, networking project. Uh, we can click on specification and designs. So here in the open compute uh, project, these are all the list of the hardware, the Ethernet switches, as well as uh, wireless access point, which are all uh, the design has been submitted for open compute. Some of them are accepted hardware. They are already certified and some of them are still under review or they are not yet, uh, yet certified. Uh, so here, most of the stuff here are the Ethernet switches, for example, the Facebook switches, the Wedge uh, 32 port 100 gig uh, switches, or the uh, 400 gigabit per second switches from uh, from H Core. Uh, these are all available here. The full design and uh, the specification. Now there are wireless access points also here. So for example, there are a few of them here. So let's have a look at this one, the ECW5410, which is a uh, A211AC 4x4 indoor wireless access point. So for each of these products, which are listed in Open Compute, uh, we can download the design specification, which is the um, open spec for the hardware. Uh, which can help us to understand how the product works. So this one is an enterprise grade uh, access point, so open source access point, and it is based on a uh, Qualcomm processor. So it has a Qualcomm uh, CPU 8068, and it got two separate radios also from Qualcomm 9994. Uh, for so the same chipset has been used for uh, one chip dedicated for the 5 gigahertz and one chip dedicated for 2.4 gigahertz radio. Uh, separate chips for the RAM and flash uh, are all available here, and uh, these are all the 
you know the designs of the of the wireless access point uh, we can see it's got two ethernet ports which you know uh, once we load the uh, the open source uh, linux software here we can create a uh, bonding or ether channel you know link aggregate these two interfaces to become one single higher throughput interface is the block diagram of the of this access point so everything is connected to that main cpu here and the two radios we got we got another optional uh bluetooth uh chipset also for which is controlled again by the same uh cpu here the two interfaces with got two files and also we got the pcb uh layouts uh showing here in some of the designs if you look uh, you will be able to find the complete schematics the gerber files and also the the pcb layout of the uh, of those products in the open compute so these are the real uh, open hardware open source uh, wireless access point or a few of them there and uh, so these are they just come uh, with, with the ability to uh, for you to load uh, your own choice of the operating system on these wireless access points uh, it's not coming uh, it's not similar to what what we did just now with uh, uh, with that tip link all right so now you may think about that why do we need open source wireless access points why it is required and what problem is it going to solve so in, in general uh, all the uh, wireless access points especially the enterprise grade wireless access point they are all coming with a closed uh, function so they are all managed through a central wireless controller so with open source wireless access point you can deploy your own version of the capwap agents on those wireless access points so capwap is a protocol which is used uh, between wireless controller and wireless access points uh, it's a standard open standard protocol from ietf and you can uh, and the capwap agent also is available is open source uh, so you can you know there are open capwaps uh, available uh, project available for open wrt uh, which uh, includes uh, you know all this all the details for building these agents uh, for uh, for open wrt and you can put it on the uh, on these access points uh, i mean you know whatever uh, access point you are using you can just uh, compile and use the capwap agents on your open wrt and you can also connect it to if you got uh, a capwap server uh, access controller uh, you can use that to uh, manage all of your wireless uh, access point who are running the capwap so through capwap you can uh, you can manage the wireless access points for you know creating uh, ssids managing the w wpa or wpa2 keys uh, making the authentication happen uh, through a central radio server or you know some some other central pam servers uh, you can create also automated mm, deployment and management you can integrate your your wireless system with you know with with any other you know, subsystem you know you can create a portal for creating guest wireless network for example and you know based on the time you know that specific ssid with with some specific password you know it can show up and you know there are lots of cool stuff which can be done uh another important thing is you know with with this open source wireless access point you can create also you can integrate it to your sdn network you can create a software defined wireless network so the cap app, for example, is supported by uh, SDN controllers like Open Daylight. So cap app is one of the uh, southbound protocols supported by uh, by Open Daylight, and uh, Open Daylight will be able to manage your ac wireless access point who are all com communicating to uh, to ODL via the cap app. So that's also another cool stuff uh, which which you can manage and control you know thousands of the access points using using your SDN controller uh, in terms of customization you can you know once you have you know a wireless access point you know where you have you you are free to do anything with it you can download package anything you know uh, available from the open WRT and also you can compile and install you know something else you know the the build chains are all available for different uh, processors so the, the, the processor we had here is it was uh, i think it's a mips processor so you got the tool chain for mips you can compile you know some some other code and you know you can run it on the open wrt on your uh tp link wireless access point or anything or the edge core uh, uh access point 
you can do also, you know, from security wise, you know, there are lots of things can be done. The simplest one is to, you know, doing the honeypot projects. So honeypots, uh, you know, there are there are some commercial versions, you know, of coming uh, in, in the market right now. But, you know, creating cool honeypots, you know, or doing uh, combining the honeypot with wireless uh, intrusion prevention system or wireless, wireless intrusion detection system. That's also some other cool stuff which can be done mm -hmm. using using this uh, open source wireless access points. Uh, so this was about uh, disaggregated uh, wireless. Uh, if you have any question, please feel free. You can write it in the forum or you can contact me directly. Thank you very much.